this is a cool now this is cool video game news here um one of my favorite games ever is uh spider-man for ps4 it's freaking we didn't, uh, we didn't play the sounder uh did we not play the video game sounder we did not. We can't go without it. We we cannot. That's a sin, Rich. Uh, you have to uh, play the sounder. Thank you for uh, rem- you- Trent. Thank you for reminding me because yes, if I'm going to go on to video game news, I should make a transition, right? Absolutely. Good job, my friend. That's why you are a pro. You are a pro's pro, Trent. You know how to do this whole radio are, thing. Are you a pro? Well, sometimes. <laughs> Video game news. Video game. Yeah. I'm said I'm a pro, so I think I am. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean that 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 uh, that intro every week brings uh, listeners to chills, and and they just <laughs> it makes their week every time they hear that intro. So that's why I wanted to stand up for our audience and say you have to play this intro before you get into video game news. I appreciate that, Trent. And yeah, that's why I'm sitting down because. I, I get so weak. It's so amazing when I hear that. I might have, you know, fallen down and broke my neck or something. So I'm, I'm very important. I'm sitting down when we play the video game news intro. So uh, yes, and here's here's some great video game news. Uh, if you're a big fan of the Spider-Man, the Sony Spider-Man video games, uh, Spider-Man Four was awesome, um, and also Miles Morales, which was released for both PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five. Man, that game was awesome. But a new book reveals what a mistake this is. Xbox turned down Marvel's exclusivity offer. So Sony's smash hit Spider-Man could have been an Xbox exclusive. Instead, according to a book, uh, it says the ultimate his the book was called The Ultimate History of Video Games Volume 2. They said that the Xbox turned Marvel down. So, uh, and that is a, a big time mistake because, uh, you know, we all know Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, they all shape the, uh, modern gaming world and the book, oh, sh- yeah. the book sheds light on how Spider-Man's PlayStation exclusivity came to be on Sony. Apparently Marvel executives looking to reinvigorate their video game IPs to rival the popular Batman Arkham series which is also a freaking awesome game. doesn't get much better than that Spider-Man game or the Batman Arkham series. Um, They approached both Microsoft and Sony at around the same time. According to then executive vice vice president of Marvel games, Jay Ong, uh, he says, uh, I reached out to both sides, both Xbox and PlayStation and said, we don't have any big console deals with anyone right now. What would you like to do? Microsoft strategy was to focus on their own IPs. Uh, They passed. This information and more has been shared uh, uh, on different websites, so this is confirmed. Instead, Sony took the offer, and the rest, as they say, is history. Insomniac Games, uh, uh, creators of Xbox-exclusive games like Sunset Overdrive, was tapped to develop the new Spider-Man game, which would go on to become one of the best-selling PlayStation 4 games of all time, and net Sony over a hundred million dollars. Uh, the much anticipated sequel, set to be released on PlayStation Five sometime in 2023. So that kind of reminds me of you know I was just watching, been watching a lot of Magic Johnson stuff lately. I'll get into that a little bit. Couch Report, but uh, Winning Time on HBO, they really go into how uh, he had a chance to sign with Nike before Nike was anything. And instead, he decided to take, I think it was 300 grand from Converse. Um, And that was a big mistake because not signing, uh, obviously, Michael Jordan did sign with with Nike years later, um, but it cost Magic Johnson billions of dollars. And I'm sure this is, uh, and that's not, that's not even exaggerating. I think, I I believe it's billions. He lost a a ton of money. uh, maybe maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it was millions, but I know it's a lot of money. Um, but I feel like Xbox must feel the same way at this point, especially when you see what the MCU is doing in theaters and, and how, you know, the Spider-Man game that Insomniac produced wasn't just good. It was freaking great. It was amazing. So, man, that's a big-time miss from Microsoft. It, that just shows, Trent, 
big business, whether it's Microsoft saying no to Marvel or oh, yeah. Magic Johnson saying no to Nike. When, when you're dealing with money like that, a decision like that at the time that might not seem so big can make all the difference in the world to the future, you know? Oh, it really can. I mean, business is business, man. Business is uh, it just, it, it's a crazy, and you know, if, you, if uh, you're concerned about the hurt feelings in the business world, uh, maybe the business world is, is not the um, world you want to be in because you're going to have that sometimes, whether you like people or you don't. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, I guess this is big news. A lot of big time Fortnite video game players out there. I'm not much into the Fortnite. Uh, we just mentioned Obi Wan Kenobi, the show coming out this weekend, Disney Plus. Well, the Fortnite game apparently will offer Obi Wan as a character. The long awaited Jedi Knight Obi Wan Kenobi will finally come to the Fortnite video game on Xbox consoles, Windows, and other platforms. On Thursday, May 26th, the Obi-Wan outfit skin will be available as an individual purchase. Uh, that's what I don't like about some of these games, these online uh, uh, MMOs. Everything's all about um, purchasing things, and I just want to play the game. Um, as part of the bundle, which also includes a loading screen, uh, a glider based on the uh, Jedi fighter from Revenge of the Sith, pickaxe, and a, an emote. That features a hologram message of Obi Wan saying, "May the Force be with you." Um, Ooh, very exciting! But uh, here's uh, something that really sucks: um, all of the bundles items, with the exception of the loading screen, will be available separately. Uh, so I guess you could buy it as a bundle, or you could buy each thing separately. However, frustratingly, Obi Wan's pickaxe is a basic knife instead of a lightsaber you already lost me there so i'm gonna have ob1 in the game and i don't have a lightsaber bye bye i don't care <laughs> see you later yeah. see ya i mean that that sucks uh, how could you have ob1 in the game and uh not have a lightsaber it defeats the purpose in my opinion especially yeah, in a man, fighting game it like really that. does you know of course it's a shooter but i'm pretty sure i haven't played Fortnite, but I'm sure there's a melee aspect to it. Uh, I don't think it would be too hard to give him a lightsaber. Come on. Uh, and also, in video, this is pretty huge, Trent. I don't know. Have you, are you a big, I know you do the gym sometimes. Do you do the bike? Do you do a bike? Yes, at the I gym? do. I, I, I like to do those sometimes. Uh, I try to get to the gym. Uh, it's been kind of scattered as of late, but I try to get to the gym at least three times a week. Uh, uh, so, so, but yeah, I, I, I've, I haven't done the bike in, in a few weeks, but uh, yeah, I do like the stationary bike. Sure. I had considered, I, I really dig the idea of the Peloton. Have you heard of the Peloton? Peloton. Oh yeah, definitely. I've heard of that. Uh, I, I have, I have a friend of mine who has one that loves it. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. I really dig it. I know they've gone through some financial difficulties this past year. They've had a drop in sales. Maybe that'll make the price a little bit better, but um, you know, it's, it's a, the exercise bike with the screen on it. It offers all the classes. Um, so I, I always thought that was pretty cool. A little bit pricey. But here's something that might put it over the top for me. Did you know that you can now play video games on your Peloton? Oh, so while you're pedaling and while you're moving, you can play video games? You while can you're doing play it? video games on your Peloton. No greater thing has ever been said in the history of mankind and more specifically exercise. Well, it actually makes sense because you know, your adrenaline is usually up whenever you're playing video games anyway. And you're more apt to like whenever your adrenaline's up, in my opinion, you're, you're more apt to get a, a better workout because you're moving faster. You know, you can kind of kind of move and you get that speed faster than, than normal because you got that extra, you know, second wind and that boost. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, that, that's a, that's a, an interesting, uh, interesting thing right there for sure. Um, you know, so that yeah, I I would dig that. Shoot, I, I, if I had a video game I wanted to play, and I wanted to exercise, I could do. I could play. You know, two birds. I could kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. I can exercise and get the exercise that I need. Whereas you know, playing video games. Whereas a lot of people will exercise and then play their video games. Well, I'll tell you this, Trent. Um, blending video <laughs> games and home fitness isn't necessarily a new thing. 
Nintendo released a number of fitness-themed games over the years, including Wii Fit. Um, Peloton's entry into this space called Lane Break is the most lamest game of all time, unfortunately, I have to say. Uh, and I was excited when I saw video games on your Peloton, and then I read what Lane Break was all about, and I'm not excited anymore, Trent. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Uh, Axios reports Lane Break is now widely available to Peloton users. According to an announcement from Peloton, Lane Break can be accessed via the More Rides menu. If you have a Peloton, you know what that is. And, uh, and also different music is available with it. That's pretty cool. Uh, details, including, by the way, are you a big David Bowie fan, Trent? No, I like David Bowie. Yeah, I like uh, Space Oddity. That's a good song. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I like Golden Years. I don't know the words. That's the worst rendition of that song I think I have ever heard. <laughs> I thought it was excellent. How dare you, Trent? Not me. <laughs> You're so harsh. You're such a critic. <laughs> Everybody's such a critic. My word. But apparently uh, the fitness platform has exclusive David Bowie remixes. Uh, details on gameplay include the fact that it centers around moments which fall into three categories. Beats, breakers, and streams. With the first mm -hmm. of these, the player will earn points for being, how exciting, in the correct lane. Okay. Uh, well, correct lane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You gotta stay in your lane. So, you know, I hear a lot of people saying that these days. So, uh, stay you in, stay your, in lane. your lane. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, that's the object of the game. Uh, I thought here uh, I was gonna be playing Evil Dead the game while riding my Peloton, but instead I gotta just play Lane Break. Instead of you know what, Trent? Instead of Lane Break, they should call it Lame Break. Get it? Because it's lame. <laughs> ha 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 uh so yeah you gotta stay in your correct lane um oh well that's oh, what i tell you to do <laughs> yes that, it's good advice uh players will earn points for the moments that they complete and can see how they did relative to other players who competed at the same difficult difficulty levels this game sucks and i didn't even play it yet Lane break has been a, a long time coming, but it feels like a logical next step for Peloton. Um, and it also says, which I, I, I can't judge because I haven't seen it, which sounds pretty cool. It says that the game has a retro look and it's very appealing for people who are into retro games. And that's kind of a thing these days. People are kind of really into the whole retro game thing. They like to buy the... Uh, 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 SNES Super, you know, they sell mini versions of Super Nintendo or NES Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega Genesis with games loaded into it. A lot of people like playing some retro games these days. So um, that look might be uh, Peloton trying to uh, tap into that um, that retro game love that's out there right now, Trent. Speaking of video games, I haven't heard you talk about it in a couple of weeks. Are you still playing Elden Ring? Are people still playing Elden Ring? How's people are still everything? playing How's that? I haven't played it in some time, to be honest with you. I've moved on from it a little bit, um, but that's the way I am. Uh, generally, there is a chance eventually I'll get back into it. A uh, great example of that is usually the Zelda games. I'll, uh, I, re I think it was Skyward Sword. I'll never forget. I think I played about... 35 hours of Skyward Sword and then I didn't play it for a year and about a year later I was like how can I, I put almost 40 hours into this game and not finish it jump back then uh, jump back in and uh, 40 hours later I would finish it that game took about 86 hours because it's a Zelda game uh, but you know generally games like that that um, something will happen that frustrates me uh, I'm I'm I, I, I'm definitely at a point where I faced a boss that's killing me all the time and it frustrated me, so it made me stop playing. But uh, eventually, hopefully, I jump back into it. These days, I'm mostly playing baseball, basketball, and Evil Dead. I'm kind of rotating those games right now. Um, so until I find another game that will tickle my fancy. 
(laughs) 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 Do you like it when things tickle your fancy, Trent? Yeah, I've always found that um, I've always found that thing that that, uh, phrase (laughs) kind of weird. You know what tickles my fancy? What's that? Well, just take a guess. Sports. Yes. (laughs) You are a genius. At this guy is too quick. It is Super Radio Brothers Sports Time. And yes, sports do tickle my fancy. What can I tell you? I love it. And there are a lot of sports going on. Isn't that true, Trent? Oh my gosh, that is so true. There is so much going on. I'll uh, take the lead to uh, start off with the sports. And um, hey, you might as well talk about the uh, Rays Yankees upcoming series How because. How dare you lead with baseball? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, well, no you know what? No, you changed my mind. <laughs> I want to lead with my beloved Tampa Bay. That's Lightning. what I was expecting. Okay. I want to leave with my beloved Tampa Bay. Like, screw the Yankees. I don't <laughs> yeah. Want the, the, you're a the, Rays yeah. fan. Don't leave with the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, Even they, though they you're kind of with the Rays, too. But you have a hockey team that's won two straight championships and is literally eight games away from three-peating. Eight wins yeah. away from three-peating. Yeah, nothing that's happened that's never happened before in franchise history, and uh, it hasn't happened for a long, long time. The uh, Pittsburgh Penguins didn't they have a stretch where they won a lot of Stanley Cups? I, I can't remember. The I, most I don't famous remember the exact- I can remember is the early '80s uh, New York Islanders that won four straight cups. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, something like that. That well, was a hopefully- huge run when they won the four straight. Uh, yeah, but uh, the the thing is, in sports these days, what's really impressive about it is you just don't see repeat champions. It's been a long time. I know in baseball you haven't seen it since the the 90s Yankees. Um, In basketball, you haven't seen it. I want to say, well, maybe I'm wrong, since since Golden State. Uh, So that wasn't too long ago. But uh, it just doesn't happen a lot. It's a great accomplishment. It's so easy to come back uh, a season after winning a championship and not being as motivated – a couple things go wrong, and, and before you know it, it's just a tidal wave of misfortune that leads to uh, not repeating. I mean, look at – great example. Look at the Milwaukee Bucks. You go into the NBA playoffs this year, and you think they have as good a chance as anybody as winning an NBA championship. They're just, uh, they just won one. They have uh, a player who a lot of people consider to be best player in the world right now in Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, You get into that second round series against the Boston Celtics and your number two guy, uh, Chris Middleton, comes up with a bad injury. He's out for the rest of the season. And now uh, Giannis doesn't have a running mate and you don't win a re you don't get a chance to repeat all because of one injury that happens in a playoffs. And I do believe that I think that series against the Celtics would have been a lot different if Middleton played in that series, because if you watch the Milwaukee Bucks, that's how they close games. Middleton, Giannis, pick and roll over and over again because it's hard to defend with those two players. Once you took Middleton out of the equation, uh, it was pretty hard for the Bucks to win that series against the Celtics, but they still they gave all the Celtics all they wanted. You know, it's just a well, similar to, situation with the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Hard to Lightning. Repeat. Yeah, I agree. But a uh, similar situation with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning lost Braden Point in uh, game, uh, what was it, game uh, seven of the uh, Toronto series. And uh, people were going, oh, man, you know, Brayden, it's going to be tough. He's going to be missed in the Florida Panthers series. And he was. You know, he was missed. Uh, he, uh, Whenever the Lightning would have a bad shift, he was always the one, and he, and, and he still will be, but he, he was always the one that kind of cleaned it up a little bit. He played the cleanup role a little bit. He was kind of that utility player on offense where, you know, he kind of started the two-on-one breakaways occasionally or he would participate in those you know he, he would be uh he was great in the power play uh but the lightning did not have a point at all for the florida panther series and rich to be honest it really didn't matter because the panthers were outplayed this entire series you know we, we we've, we've already talked about uh the ending of the toronto series and how tampa bay's gotten here let's kind of look back a little bit on this lightning panthers series there were times where you know the, the panthers did you know kind of have uh th- there were times that that florida you know 
if they would have taken advantage of scoring opportunities, they would have easily beaten the Tampa Bay Lightning. But you know what? Uh, they didn't do that because the Lightning were on their game. The Lightning only allowed the Florida Panthers to score three goals throughout the entire series. And to, to do that to a team that led the league and goals scored in the National Hockey League or were among one of the leader, league leaders in doing this uh, was, was quite impressive, cr- impressive without – well, Braden in the Atlantic point. Division, they were number one, 122 points, and you get swept? Yeah. And, I mean, you're the Florida the, Panthers. That's a disgraceful showing. And they won the President's Cup, too. I mean, it just shows that, you know, and, and I think it's seven straight years that if you win, that the President's Cup team has uh, fallen short in the playoffs. So uh, that's that's kind of a, a trend that's been there for a little while in the NHL. So, uh, But you got to give it to the Lightning, man. They, uh, they stepped, and, and to me, um, after game two, this series was over. After we brought, you know, because uh, game two was memorable because uh, with uh, with like what point nine seconds left, uh, they are the. Uh, hold on, I'm about to sneeze, Rich. Sorry. Uh-oh. Uh oh. But uh, with the, <laughs> yeah, with uh, with point nine seconds. I want to hear it. Do it right into the microphone, Trent. I need to hear the sneeze. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nasty. Uh, but uh, with uh, w- with point nine seconds left, Nikita Kucherov uh, scored the game winning goal for the Lightning to uh, get him up two to one. Uh, but really, the Panthers had no answer for the adjustments the Lightning made, or just for anything the Tampa Bay Lightning did. The, the the Panthers got cocky. They were like, "Oh, we'll beat you guys." You know, last year's playoff series was good. A lot of people thought that it was going to go seven, but really that when, when the Panthers number one they don't have much depth and number two uh they they, they weren't un, they were unable to to adjust on the fly to the lightning and that's exactly what happened I mean the lightning were pretty good in the power play they scored power play goals when they needed to uh in in the clinching game four they really uh I think they were like oh for three oh for four in the power play but uh they ended up scoring goals right after the uh, power play uh ended and uh and everything so uh that was that was definitely unique, but you, you got to give it to the Lightning. Uh, they, 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 whenever this team is resilient, a lot of people use different adjectives to describe them, but I think resilient is a good one because when they're down, they get back up and they don't stay down. And uh, that's that's the uh, that's the mindset of the coaching staff. That's the mindset of the ownership. And uh, hey, we're just waiting. We don't know who we're going to play next, but uh, we're just waiting on that. Well, resilience good, but I'll give you a better word: champions. They're right. champions. That, you know, you go in there, you take out the top team. It's it, you know what it reminds me of. I think the year was two thousand. You know, you go back to the Yankees uh, winning all those championships late nineties. Uh, they come off the one fourteen and ninety eight. Seattle comes back in two thousand. Seattle Mariners. They win one hundred and sixteen regular season games. Right. Well, all right. You won one hundred and six sixteen regular season games. You're the top team in the sport. Now you got to legitimize it. You got to go out and win a championship. Seattle, 116 wins regular season. You know what happened? They lost to the Yankees in five games in the ALCS that year. So, uh, and that reminds me of, of what the the Lightning did this year. Here, the Lightning, you know, you're going up against uh, the, the, the Florida Panthers, top team in the division, conference, you know, most points. Uh, and you go out and you sweep them. And you tell them, oh, well, we don't care what you did during the regular season. It's about what you do now. This is winning time. This is championship time. You can win all the games you want in the regular season. These are the games that really count. And the teams that win championships know that, and they know how to get things done under the brightest lights. And uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning continue to prove year after year here, uh, playoff series after playoff series, that they're up for the task. You know, whether it's against the Islanders a year ago or against the Panthers here and whoever they face uh, in the Eastern Conference final, uh, Panthers. Uh, they, the, the well, Lightning. When, you, when you look at the uh, you look at the Lightning back in 2018, where they were in the same spot the Panthers were. They played the Columbus Blue Jackets and got swept right. You know, four, four zip, one two three four. They were done. And uh, John Cooper was asked about that. You know, a, a couple days before, they were like, you know, hey, you know, the the Panthers kind of been in your situation. You know, the Lightning I think won the President's Cup, then they lost to the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, and and then I think John Cooper was asking, you know, have you learned anything? from the uh the columbus blue jacket series and his response was simple you know we haven't lost since yep that's that's a great point and that's exactly what happened and and uh again you know what you say all these things and 
I guess maybe because I was a fan of a dynasty too, and that's exactly what the um, the Lightning are developing into. Because you look at the Yankees before the Yankees won the three straight championships, um, uh, 98, 99, and 2000. In 97, they had a heartbreaking loss against the Cleveland Indians in the playoffs where Mariano Rivera uh, gave up that home run to uh, Alomar to win the series, the walk-off home run. Um, and Yankees didn't lose for three years, you know, and they went to four straight championships. So that's what the great teams do. They they come back from what's a, a devastating all-time loss, just something that feels like, man, how can you ever come back from this? And you just never lose again, you know, and, and that's the mark of a dynasty, of a great team, of a, of a team that fans of the sport will be talking about for decades, for, for the rest of, of time, for however long the sport is significant, you know, and, and that's the conversation that the Lightning are putting themselves in right now with every playoff game and every playoff series that they win. Yeah, and uh, you know, people are like, I'd rather than play the Rangers, I'd rather play them the, the Hurricanes, you know, and, and every team has, you know, different strengths and different weaknesses. But to be honest with you, Rich, it, it shouldn't matter who the Lightning play because I think the Lightning are capable of beating either the Rangers or the Hurricanes. I think the, the Hurricanes kind of play to what the Lightning do defensively and, and can make more adjustments, whereas, you know, the, the Rangers, you know, have a great goaltender, but on, on defense, they're not as great. Uh, so, I mean, we, we might be able to score goals off of their defense, but uh, I think they have a, a you know, a, a, a semi uh, a contendable uh, goaltender. Um, but, but at this point, you just, at this point, I don't even think it, it matters who the lightning play. Uh, because I think the lightning, if they go out there and play their brand of hockey, they're going to beat them and they'll be back in the Stanley cup champions again, either playing, you know, the lightning avalanche or the lightning and the blues. You just never know. Yeah. You don't, when you're the Tampa Bay lightning and you've won back to back championships and you're trying to win a third, you don't worry about who you're going to play that you, you can beat anybody. <laughs> You're the champions. And the yeah. thing is, you then the Lightning, what the Lightning want is they want this uh, Rangers Hurricane series to at least go, you know, six, seven games it's so you can get guys. Go seven. I would think so too. I mean, I, in my opinion, you know, I hope they do because that, that was the advantage of them sweeping the Florida Panthers on Monday night because the Lightning will have at least a week of rest. And people are like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're going to be rusty by the time they get back on the ice. No, they're not. That's the most, that's the lamest excuse I think I've if ever heard. If this was a team where it was their first playoff run, I think you could say that. But when you're talking about a team that's already won two championships, the rest is only going to do them good. It's not going to hurt them. They have too much experience in these spots for the rest. No, and give, to, and, and, to, and to you heard the up. other day that Braden Point has a shot to play in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, with, with this rest, if the his chances of playing in this series are higher. I, I have had fun with the Rangers Carolina of uh, 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 Hurricane Series. I am a Ranger fan. Um, you know, Shesterskin had a, a rough series against the, the Penguins. He was able to come back. Um, and then yeah, that's when you use the word resilient. So far, that's what the Rangers have shown themselves to be. They come back down 3-1 to one against the Penguins to win that series. They were down 2-0 against the Hurricanes here. They won back-to-back -back games at the Garden pretty convincingly, 3-1, to 4-1. Uh, Shesterkin's looking more like the uh, goalie that he was uh, during the regular season. So I just, as, as a Ranger fan, I look at it, and I just want a shot. You know, take out uh, the, the Hurricanes and, and at least get a shot against uh, the Lightning. And I look at hockey as a sport where it's similar to baseball in the randomness of it where you know what you get into a series i don't care if the yankees win 118 regular season games if they go into a series where the opposition has some pitchers that are on fire yankees could lose you know because in baseball uh, it's about pitching and if you face a team that has some pitches that are hot chances are uh, they're gonna win uh, and in hockey, I look at it similar in the sense that if you have a goalie that's hot, I don't care who you're playing against. You have a good chance at winning. Um, and you can make the argument that the Rangers have the best goalie left in the playoffs here. So 
Just get a uh, shot. I'd say Vasilevsky is pretty hot too. Well, give I'd him say a chance. He's pretty good. Give him a chance. Oh yeah, and and that's a championship goalie. But it'd be hard to argue that that he had a better season than Shosturkin. You know, I mean, a lot of people would consider him the best regular season goalie this year. You know, from from what I understand, I've only watched half a hockey game this year. But you know, from what I've read, uh, he's gonna win. Uh, he could win the award for best goalie of the year. Oh, you talking about uh, Shosturkin? Yeah, yeah, could win. The, yeah, I mean, yeah, and and I. Can, what is it I called? Definitely... The Vesna. What's that? What What's the the goalie award again? In hockey, uh, I think it's the Vesna. I, I think that's what I it's can't. Called. I can't think of what it's. I might sound like is. a complete idiot right now, but I think that's what it's called. But uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know everything I hear. This guy has been, the, which is pretty shocking, because he got pulled from two games in the first round. Um, and he's a young kid, and this is uh, being his first big time playoff run. You would expect that big loss, like you said, Lightning had that big loss a couple years ago, to kind of set you straight, make you understand what you got to do come playoff time. But if you're a Ranger fan, you got a, a dynasty in the making with the Tampa Bay Lightning in the next round. Um, you just you want a shot. Let's see what happens. Get get to that series. Get because if you get there, in my opinion, all the pressure is on the Lightning. They're 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 going for legacy now. They're going for the three straight. They're trying to do something that that's rarely ever ever done. Rangers got a bunch of young players, young goalie. You know, at this point, you get that far, it's gravy. There's no pressure on the Rangers. So uh, as a Ranger fan, you say, just give us a shot. That could be fun. Let's see what happens. You know, yeah, for sure. And uh, by the way, I have to tell you, um, guess who scored a goal uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning the other day while I was there? You were one there. Andre, one Andre Pallet. <laughs> Andre Pallet, my favorite yeah. player. Yeah, your favorite player, Andre Pallet. Yeah, he yeah. scored. I know that guy. That's the only guy I know on the Lightning. Oh no, I, I know <laughs> Vasilevsky too. Cause yeah, because you, you just said you don't his know name. Steven Stamp. You don't. You don't know Nick Paul. You don't know uh, Mikhail Sergachev. You nope. don't know uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Brandon Hagel, who came over mm. uh, from another no, team. I don't know Hagel. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. Yep. Uh, Nikita Kucherov. You can't I know him. I've him. heard that name. I love Kucherov. Yeah, maybe that's why I know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to talk more about my actual experience at the game during my couch report, but. Cool. Uh, but that's uh, but yeah, it's uh, that was uh, I mean well, this week it's another off the couch report. But nice, uh, you're still, always uh, off the couch, uh, but, Trent. That's healthy. Though. What's that? I said you're always off the couch, but I guess that's a little healthy. You know, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I try to always be doing something. That's the goal. <laughs> you try, as you see, I'm the I try to always be doing nothing. It's very important to me to do nothing. I know. I know that your weekends, most of your weekends, except for this one, but uh, it's so most painful of your weekend- to actually be talking right now because I wish I was doing nothing. Uh, well, you're going to be doing nothing after the show's over for at least another day, and then you're going out of town. So oh, yeah, I'll be doing you're... a lot of thing, <laughs> a lot. Oh of yeah, I'll talk That's about right. that on the couch report too. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, let's move to the uh, Major League Baseball. Yeah, I'm going to talk about my Rays while I'm at it, man. Oh, the right. uh, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, they just swept the series from the Miami Marlins. Uh, before the show started, uh, I thought they were um, going to. Uh, I thought they were going to blow this five nothing lead. You know, they scored five runs in the bottom of the first inning. Uh, uh, Harold Ramirez hit his second home run in consecutive days, and uh, Kevin Kiermeyer also drove in another run. So, congratulations to Kevin and and uh, Wander Franco. Kind of got going. Uh, he was back in the lineup, and uh, so uh, 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 you know, you guys, excuse me, produced uh, up and down the lineup. And uh, look, the, uh, the the Rays are, are playing good baseball right now. They're nine games over 500. I think that's their highest uh, watermark this season. What really has stung them the past few days is um, their lack of, of pitching and defense, especially during, at the end of the Baltimore series. The Rays had an opportunity to sweep Baltimore, but on Friday – they blew three separate leads, lost in extra innings. On Saturday, they got it done. They they won pretty handily. Uh, but then on Sunday, it was kind of the same thing. You know, Tampa Bay had a lead. They added on, but they still couldn't hold it. You know, it was it was it was the the darndest thing, Rich, because I was watching that game. Okay, it was in the top of the ninth inning. Tampa Bay was up. I think it was six to four, and in the bottom of the ninth, 
the rains were coming in Baltimore. You know how like, you know how the skies look dreary whenever it's, it's starting to come, and then it's like a real calm atmosphere before a storm comes, yeah. and then all of a sudden out of out of nowhere the wind just starts the blowing. Calm and, before the storm, as they would say, Trent. Absolutely, but uh, but but the the Rays were doing everything they could to try to get out of there with the wind and uh, to try to try to hurry things up. It was it was hurried because uh, you know the 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 goal. Bill Welke, the home plate umpire, did everything he could to get the game in uh, as much as he could. But in the bottom of the ninth, Baltimore put two runners on. The Rays were a strike away. All um, I can't remember who was pitching at that current moment. Uh, whoever it was, it was, he was a dumb son of a gun because. He uh, was not locating his pitches or doing much of anything. I, I seriously can't remember who was pitching at that current moment. But um, they, they were strike away, and Austin Hayes comes up, delivers a two-run single to tie the game, and then just literally a minute after he did that, the bottoms fell out of the sky in Baltimore. It was uh, it was crazy. So uh, it was a fifteen. It was about a fifty-minute rain delay. The Rays come back. They get it to extras. First and third, nobody out. Couldn't get them in. And then the Orioles end up winning the game uh, on a uh, on a on a rough play in the bottom of the eleventh inning to uh, to win the game seven to six. And um, again, uh, that that was a, a missed opportunity because they had an opportunity to really gain ga- ground on the Yankees because the uh, Yankees and White Sox were rained out this past Friday, but they played a day night. Del- uh, wait, was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Uh, they were rained out because they won on Saturday, and then uh, the uh, the Yankees had a chance to the, the the Rays had a chance to gain even more ground on the Yankees because they played a day night doubleheader and uh, lost the doubleheader to the White Sox. The White Sox won both those games. And uh, and had, and so I was like, oh man, you know. The, and then the Rays were playing a team in Baltimore that, uh, honestly, this past weekend it looked like they took for granted. And uh, you're not going to go 18 and one against Baltimore overall, but that was a very winnable series uh, for Baltimore. So, or, I mean, for Tampa Bay. So uh, they had to bounce back, uh, and and then they did this week to uh, play the Miami Marlins. And here we are at the Rays Yankees series. Uh, Rich will get into more of the injuries. Uh, for the New York Yankees uh, here in a minute. But uh, I just want to talk uh, briefly about Kevin Kiermeyer because Kiermeyer is starting to hit the ball really well. Uh, Kiermeyer's had a great uh, week, you know, week or two. And uh, part of that was uh, he noticed that his swing was uh, not not doing very well. He noticed there were some flaws in his swing. So he uh, went to a, a professional analyst when it came to kind of analyzing Major League Baseball players' swings and things like that and saying, okay, you know, maybe Kevin, you need to start – hitting the ball more to the left side of the field or you need to, you know, stop swinging at high fastballs. And, and basically it was a real in-depth uh, analysis uh, of uh, they brought in an outside party and uh, Kevin Kiermeyer just kind of shortened his swing a little bit. His, his launch angle was the issue. So he kind of changed his angle a little bit. And now he's hitting the ball more to the left side of the field and uh, really kind of uh, hitting the ball to all fields during this uh, little mini hitting streak. And uh, now you see Kevin Kiermeyer is leading the uh, team in home runs in five. So it's uh, mm. uh, it's insane to see what he's doing. And Brett Phillips has done the same thing as well. So, the, look, the Rays offense is getting better. Uh, the Tropicana field has been a house of horrors for the New York Yankees. Uh, as of late, and uh, they got a four-game series. It's hard to win four, but um, I, th- I think uh, even if if the Rays and Yankees were to split, uh, I think that's still uh, that's still tough to swallow because if if the Rays are on top of their game, I think they can take three out of four. Uh, I really do, uh, uh, at least. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens there. It's a long season, but uh, Rich, the Rays are on the right track right now. Nine games over five hundred with some reinforcements coming back. And if you're the Yankees, uh, that's exactly what you want. You want to get out of this series in Tampa with a split. I think that's exactly the scenario that you're looking for if you're the Yankees considering recent events. Now, um, and man, oh man, speaking about jinxing, last week on this show I said last couple of years the Yankees have been so injured, they've been healthy this year, and they're off to this historic start. Well, guess what? That's no longer the case. They've had their first adversity adversity of the season. Uh, they had their first three-game losing streak where they lose the two games on Sunday against the Chicago White Sox and then lose the series opener against Baltimore. Now they win the next two against Baltimore uh, to take the series heading into the uh, four-game series against Tampa over the weekend. But man, oh man. 
what do they say? When it rains, it pours. I mean, you just got to, it's, you, (laughs) it's hard to believe when you look at it. But anyway, DJ LeMayhew, we'll see if he plays in this series against the Rays. He has a wrist issue. Uh, He had an MRI that showed no structural damage. So he he had a, uh, um, he took a shot, cortisone shot on Wednesday. Uh, I think maybe he'll be back by Friday, Saturday, but obviously DJ LeMayhew, huge part of this lineup. Uh, He has a wrist injury right now. Giancarlo Stanton off to a mega hot start. The 11 home runs, a force. And, and these are big time players we're talking about. This is not, this is important stuff. John Carlos Stanton off to the hot start, start, right calf strain. And if you're a baseball fan, you know, what, what are the injuries you worry about when it comes to a hitter? You're thinking about the oblique and you're thinking about the calf. Well, we haven't, I don't have the results yet of the MRI, but uh, right calf strain for uh, John Carlos Stanton. Usually, that's at least a month. We'll see. Uh, Jonathan Luizica, one of the best relievers in baseball last year. He struggled this year, but still an important piece in that Yankee bullpen. Oh, he goes on the IL. Right shoulder inflammation. Araldis Chapman, the closer on the team. Left Achilles tendonitis. IL. Josh Donaldson, COVID IL. Kyle Higashioka, COVID IL. Uh, Joey Gallo, who actually played the, in the last game of the series against uh, uh, Baltimore. He's been on the COVID IL. Chad Green, important part of the Yankee bullpen. Tommy John surgery out for the season. They call up Lewis uh, Hill. And uh, you know what? It, it's contagious. Uh, he probably wasn't going to stay up too long, but he gets injured. Tommy John surgery. The Yankees are a mess, but they were able to go out there and take two out of three from the Baltimore Orioles going into the series, the first series of the season against the second place Tampa Bay Rays, battered, bruised, limping into Tampa. So uh, we'll see what the Yankees are able to do this weekend. Maybe they get LeMahieu back. Uh, a, a lot of I think maybe he'll be back Saturday. The game I go to, I hope so. Um, but you know, this is what a hot start does for you. You know, Yankees thirty-one and thirteen, um, great start to the season. Maybe a start like that can help you weather the storm of all of these injuries and misfortune. Um, but we'll see what happens this weekend. The Rays, great opportunity. You get the first series at home. You have four games against a team that has an avalanche of injuries in five days. Okay, all of these these developments have happened over the past five days. This is a huge opportunity for the Rays. All right, if you sweep the Yankees, you'll be technically tied for first place in the division. All right, and you know what? At home, if the Rays are going to do something this year, Go out there and take three out of four. You know, take four in a row against the Yankees. Because right now, the getting is good. This team is limping into Tampa. The Rays should take three out of four in this series if they're going to be a threat to the Yankees. So we'll see what happens. I'm extremely disappointed that this turn has happened when I'm going, you know. But at the same time, Yankees have a lot to to uh, to, to prove here uh, that they'll be able to overcome these things. And and uh, uh, just uh, on a side note, you got to mention the great game from uh, Jose Trevino, Yankee backup catcher, or maybe he's the catcher now. Um, but he got the walk off hit um, uh, at uh, Tuesday's uh, uh, game, the second game of the series against the Baltimore Orioles, a game the Yankees desperately needed. They had lost three games in a row. Um, they were about to lose four in a row. They take a three, uh, three, two lead into the, here's another thing that's, that's uh, uh, um, screwing with the Yankees. You know, uh, uh, Michael King been one of the best relievers in baseball. The first, his first seven appearances, his last six appearances have has over a seven ERA. They bring him in late in that game against Baltimore on Tuesday. 
he gives up a three-run home run to to Odor uh, uh, to blow a three three to two lead, make it five to do Baltimore Yankees come back, extra innings, Trevino uh, uh, with the walk-off single. What was significant about that game? Trevino apparently has been a Yankee fan his whole life. Him and his dad. His dad passed away back in 2013. Here he is in a in the Bronx with a walk-off hit. Uh, on his late father's birthday, so that was really cool to see, um, and and it, and not just cool to see. Like I said, huge win that stops a three-game losing streak. They take the series from Baltimore, and it's hard to say that a series is big early in the season. But you know what? We're at the end of May. The cliche is Memorial Day weekend. You know where your baseball team is. Well, the Rays have a chance to uh, make a statement here by Memorial Day that, no, we're still the team to beat in the American League East. That Yankee start was an aberration, and here they go again with all the the BS injuries and the nonsense that's going to take place the rest of the season. We'll see what happens. It's a But as a baseball fan, it is a fascinating series, and I'm really happy to be going to one of the games. You're going to trap You don't necessarily like the ballpark, but, uh, hey, i got to tell you, the um... – and make sure you get one of your beers. You know, the, the beer's good. Um, you know, it just... Uh, oh, that's, and just, that's uh, without a doubt, bro. <laughs> and just be grateful, man. You're sitting in the stadium. You're sitting in Florida. Be grateful you're not sitting in an outdoor stadium, 90-degree <laughs> weather. You're sitting inside at a comfortable 72 degrees. And uh, we're expecting to get some <laughs> rain down here in the uh, the Tampa Bay area uh, this weekend as well. So... Uh, just just be grateful that you're not going to have any rain delays this weekend because you are inside the most comfortable stadium in baseball <laughs> at Tropicana Field. One of my favorite things uh, um, was uh, um, listening to Yankee games on the re- on the radio. And, of course, you get Ma and Pop Pinstripe, uh, John Sterling, Susan Waldman, and it would be three and a half to four hours of them complaining about how horrible Tropicana Field is. You know, <laughs> so, so the three the, two Susan strike three is called outside corner. Did I mention how awful Tropicana Field is? This place is a dump. It's basically <laughs> it's three hours of that every broadcast when the Yankees would go to Tampa. Hilarious. Well, I'll make sure to listen to it. I'll, I'll, I'll flip over. I'll be listening to my Rays guys, but I'll flip over to uh, John and Sue and uh, see what they have if to say. If you listen to John and Susan, I play a drinking game. How many times are they going to mention how awful Tropicana Field is? You're going to be drunk uh, before the oh, game's over. Over, under, over, under, definitely over 20, I would think. <laughs> so there's no doubt about it. All right, very exciting. What else you got going on there, Trent? All right, last but certainly not least, let's do a little quick recap of the NBA playoffs. Uh, the Boston Celtics have come back uh, in that series against the Miami Heat to uh, take a uh, 3-2 series lead. And uh, they're, they're a, a moment, uh, one win away from making it back to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2010 where they played, yes, you guessed it, the Los Angeles Lakers. And you know who was on that team? Of course, uh, the Pierce? late Kobe Bryant. Oh, Kobe uh, Bryant. Rest in yeah. peace. Rest in peace, Kobe. And then you got Pal Gasol. Uh, and then you got uh, so many other. I think um, Ron Artest was on that team. And now Meta what is his World name? Peace. Uh, World Peace. Yeah, and now that, that's him now. And uh, you had Lamar Odom. He was on the team. And, uh, and then you had look. Uh, you looked for uh, Boston. Paul you had Pierce, like, Kevin Garnett. Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Rajon Rondo, uh, a couple of other guys uh, uh, off the bench uh, for the Celtics. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, the Celtics are a different team. Now they have guys like Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, uh, Derek White, uh, uh, Peyton Pritchard, who has uh, showed up in these playoffs uh, at times for Boston. So, look, uh, Miami is uh, definitely a, a good team, but – I think the Celtics won it more, uh, Rich. I really do. And uh, even, despite the fact that they're banged up, they've been able to fight through the uh, resiliency and to take a 3-2 series lead over this Heat team. It's been very good all season. Look, um, that's an extremely disappointing loss for the Miami Heat. At home, game five, uh, I'm done hearing about how Jimmy Butler is one of the top. He's he's an awesome player. He's an all-star. He's not an elite player. You're not an elite player when you have game five at home in a two-tomb series and you score 13 points. That's number one. I'd love to have Butler on my team. There's That's no doubt. But he's not a leading man. Miami's done. 
They're not winning game six. Game six on the road, down 3-2, is the hardest game to win in sports. The Celtics are going to win this series now. They're a better team. Um, and look, it's just, you look up and down the roster, whether it's a disappointing performance from J- Jimmy Butler with the 13 points, you know, a Kyle Lowry, zero points in 25 minutes. I know Tyler Hero got injured before the game. He couldn't play. Just another reason why the Heat are done. Your NBA Finals is going to be the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. And uh, I can't wait for that. You know, it's going to be an interesting series with Steph Curry. And and, and real quick, you talk about the Golden State Warriors. Uh, you know, the uh, the Dallas Mavericks, I think, uh, did end up winning that game on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they uh, So they uh, they did. They kind of salvaged the game. Then we got to game five of that series tomorrow. But uh, like I said, uh, the Dallas isn't winning that game uh, besides Luka. Uh, nobody's showing up. You got guys that are, are going over five, over seven off the bench, like you and I talked about um, uh, off the air this week. And you know, Luca Luca's a, a great player, but uh, he can't do it all on his own. And uh, you need uh, you need other guys to step up. And Dallas hasn't had that, and Golden State has. Yeah, you just if if Dallas is going to win games against Golden, especially at home, which is what the disgrace was uh, in Dallas. Uh, unable to win that game three. You had to get that game three. You can't go down three games to none. But yeah, you get Reggie Bullock going 0 for 10, 0 for 7 from three point land. Max Kleber not getting it, getting it done. Unable to get a shot. You know, Finney Smith not a factor at all. Uh, and here you have Luca averaging basically 40 points a game in the series, almost a triple double. Um, but you need those role players to show up when you're at home. Uh, and it didn't happen for Dallas. Yeah, they 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 uh, avoid the sweep. They get Game Four at home. Uh, it's a game that they were winning by as much as thirty in. So and Luca again, uh, almost a triple double with the thirty, the fourteen, and the nine. Uh, another fantastic performance from him. But you need those role players to show up, uh, and they're done. I would be shocked if Dallas goes out there and wins Game Five in Golden State. If they do, all bets are off. If I if I'm a Maverick fan, and Dallas and look, no NBA team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in a series, uh, so you're looking at an impossible mountain to climb. However, you start to look at it, you go out there, you win Game Five in Golden State. Now all you have to do is win a Game Six at home in Dallas to force a Game Seven. So it's all about Game Five. But for the Mavericks in San Francisco, game five, chance for Golden State to clinch, that's an impossible spot. I will be shocked if Dallas goes out there and wins game five. We'll see, though. Absolutely, I would be too. And uh, basically, that's uh, that's what's going on in the sports. You know, uh, lots of great things happening and. Uh, can't wait to watch the rest of the NBA playoffs. It's kind of bittersweet because the NBA playoffs are ending. Uh, very sad that the uh, the NBA season is coming to a close, but um, I'm enjoying it. And if, if it ends up being Celtics Warriors in the NBA Finals, that's going to be a competitive series without a doubt. Soon it will be all about baseball. Mm-hmm. 